Hello boys and girls, what time is it? It's lesson study time with Sister King. Welcome to the primary lesson. What number are we on? Very good, lesson number seven. What is the name of your lesson? Correct walking on water before we begin let us pray dear kind and loving father we thank you for another day and another chance to spend time with you and dear lord to learn more about you please be with us as we study may we hear your voice speaking to us is my prayer in Jesus' wonderful name with thanksgiving amen we will now say our message and memory verse then we will sing our opening song our message is, by keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Let us say that one more time. By keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Our memory verse is, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. Let us say that again. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. mission story time are you ready for a mission story do you have your mission offering our offerings help people learn to look to jesus for their salvation now come and let us listen to the mission story then the lesson study thirty years ago the Seventh-day Adventist Church embarked on a bold new mission focus that would totally change the face of the church. Church leaders identified key areas where the mission was struggling. Although the church was growing rapidly in certain parts of the world, many areas and people groups remained totally unreached. The church would continue working in areas where it was doing well. But something needed to change if we were to be faithful to the Great Commission to go to all peoples. At the General Conference session in 1990, delegates voted the Global Strategy document and Global Mission became an urgent new mission focus. There were two key objectives. One, to alert church members to the large number of unreached people groups and two, to plant new groups of believers among those groups. Since 1990, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has nearly quadrupled in size. Millions of new believers have found life in Jesus and have joined the Adventist family. They've come from new territories, new people groups, different cultures. They've brought joy to heaven and strength to God's church. We praise God for the thousands of new groups of believers that have been planted. And yet, we're still here. Mothers still sit and beg beside busy city streets. Many still wake each morning in fear of the spirit world. Millions in the 1040 window have never even heard of the name Jesus. Only one third of the people on earth are Christian. Two thirds follow other world religions. And a growing number claim no religion at all. And still there are cities of more than one million people 
with no recorded visit by even one Seventh-day Adventist. We so long for Jesus to come. That's why Global Mission continues to focus on unreached people in the 1040 window, the cities, in the secular postmodern West. Global Mission sends out thousands of Global Mission pioneers to start new groups of believers among the unreached. That's why it supports tent makers in the world's most challenging regions. And that's why Global Mission is helping to start hundreds of urban centers of influence in cities across the globe. Today, six Global Mission Centers focus on the most effective ways to share the good news with people from non-Christian backgrounds. These centers find the best ways to build bridges of understanding and help field test resource materials, methods and models. Their goal is to remove barriers that make it difficult for people to understand and accept the Gospel. We praise God for the millions who have found hope and peace in Jesus since Global Mission began. But we need more Global Mission pioneers. We need more urban centers of influence. And we need more prayer. Thirty years ago, Adventist church leaders cast a bold vision for mission. That vision still burns strong to reach unreached people, to reach teeming cities, to reach those who feel no need of religion. Today, we still need people to answer the call to mission, to reach the unreached with hope, to share the good news about Jesus. We need people who will answer the call that still echoes after 30 years. We need people who will say, I will go. It's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Walking on Water. The memory verse is from Luke chapter 18, verse 27. It says, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Today's message is by keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Do you know how to swim? Can you stay on top of the water? A long time ago, Jesus and Peter were both on top of the water, but they weren't swimming. Let's find out what happened. The disciples were in a boat together, sailing across the Sea of Galilee. They had spent the day with Jesus and had seen him do something amazing. He had taken five loaves and two fish and used it to feed more than 5,000 people. How they wished Jesus would let the people crown him king. But at the end of the day, Jesus had sent the people home. And to the disciples, he said, Go ahead, go across the lake in the boat. Then Jesus had gone to a quiet place to pray. Out on the lake, dark clouds began to gather. The wind whipped angry waves against the fishing boat. The experienced fishermen strained at the oars. They pulled harder and harder, but the storm was very strong. The storm continued raging through the night. The wind pushed the waves higher and higher. By now, the disciples were a considerable distance from the shore. Shortly before morning, but while it was still dark, Jesus saw them way out on the lake and decided to go to them. Suddenly, the disciples saw someone coming across the water toward them. They cried out in fear. It's a ghost, they shouted. It frightened them to see a person coming toward them walking over the waves as if they were on solid ground. Don't be afraid, a familiar voice called. It is I, Jesus. Then Peter called out, If it's really you, Lord, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus beckoned toward his eager and sometimes reckless disciple. 
Looking at Jesus, Peter climbed out of the boat and began walking along the top of the water. He took several steps. Then he turned his eyes away from Jesus and looked back at the disciples. He may have been thinking, Hey, look at me. Can you believe it? As he started to turn back toward Jesus, he saw the huge waves. He felt the strong winds. He became afraid and he started to sink. Instantly, Peter's courage was gone. Lord, he shouted, save me. Even as Peter began to sink, the strong arm of Jesus reached out to him. Jesus grasped hold of his outstretched hand and lifted him up. You of little faith, Jesus said, why did you doubt? Jesus meant that Peter needed only to keep his eyes on him. Peter needed to keep believing that Jesus had the power to save him. Jesus put his arm around Peter and they climbed into the boat. Once Jesus was in the boat, the wind calmed and the waves relaxed. And the little fishing boat sailed quietly to the other side of the lake. Today, Jesus says to us, Just keep your eyes on me. I'm here to rescue you. You can't do it by yourself. But don't worry. I can save you. Just keep trusting me. Created and produced by Falvo Fowler. This podcast is read by Franita Buddy Fullwood for gracelink.net. Animation and artwork by Giogo Godoy. Audio is post-produced by Faith Toe at Studio El Piso in Singapore. The theme music is by Clayton Kinney. The audio engineer was Maurice Bailey. It's question time! What did you learn from the mission story? Tell mommy or daddy what you learned. Now, I have three questions for you. Give mommy or daddy the answers. Question number one. How do you think the disciples felt when they saw Jesus? Question number two. Why do you think Peter wanted to walk on the water? And question number three. What did Jesus mean when he told Peter, keep your eyes on on me now boys and girls it's grandpa happy time and he has something to say to you hello boys and girls how's everybody today I hope you're good hey I wonder have you ever sat down just to reflect on your life a bit to look back to see where you've come from to see how God has helped you I know you're young but Every single day, God helps you. He sees you through. Yes, boys and girls, there are times when we are naughty, I know. There are times that we do bad things and, well, mommy and daddy aren't happy. When we think about it, sometimes we feel sad and we tell ourselves, I have to change. I shouldn't be this way. I know exactly how that feels because... Well, to tell you the truth, I wasn't always good myself. I've made my share of mistakes. But then I look back, I see how God loves me, how he loved me all the time, and how he saw me through every situation. He helped me. He picked me up. He told me what I needed to do to change. When I look back at my old life, I don't like it. But when I see the new life, I'm so excited. I see that God has helped me. When I remember what the Lord has done for me, boys and girls, I don't want to go back anymore. And that reminds me of a chorus. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. You know that? Let's try that together. 
When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. When I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. No, 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 no. I will never go back anymore. No, no, never, never, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh. I will never go back anymore. No turning back, boys and girls. Let God lead you to eternity. Bye-bye. Our message is, by keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Let us say that one more time. By keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Our memory verse is, what is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. Let us say that again. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. Well, well, boys and girls, we have come to the end of this week's lesson study. Let us shout out the number of our lesson study after the count of three. One, two, three. Lesson number seven. Let us shout out the name of our lesson after the count of two. One, two. Walking on water. Our message is, by keeping our eyes on Jesus, we are saved. Let us say that one more time. By keeping our eyes on Jesus, 
we are saved. Our memory verse is, What is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. Let us say that again. What is impossible with man is possible with God. Luke chapter 18 verse 27. Let us say our closing prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your gift to us, your son Jesus. I ask that the Holy Spirit speak to all the boys and girls who are listening hearts and help them to keep their eyes on you. Dear Lord, be with them and continue to bless them, I pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Bye bye boys and girls. Keep shining for Jesus. Remember to keep your eyes on Jesus. Jesus loves you.